Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, we've got this Mazda 121 on the dyno. It's equipped with a Honda K24A3 engine, but the thing that we're gonna be talking about is the electronic drive-by-wire throttles bolted on the front here. A little bit ago, Matt did a tech piece on individual throttle bodies, why you would want them, when you would fit them to which particular engine, the downsides and the upsides of fitting one throttle body per cylinder. So this car turned up here and I thought, what better car to give an example of how to tune these individual throttle bodies. This thing's a K24A3, one of the best engines ever made in my opinion. It's got electronic individual throttle bodies hanging off the front of this really nice 3D printed adapter, which is in testing at the moment. So that's why the car's here. So I thought, what better car to go through, do a software setup, show you how to configure for these individual throttle bodies, how to check the manifold pressure and decide what load source you'd be using when you're gonna tune this thing. If you didn't catch Matty's video, I'll put a link in the description. Please go and check that out first before you jump in here. That way, Matty can explain the ins and outs of how the individual throttle bodies work. You'll know a lot more about it so that when we get in here and start tuning, you'll understand exactly what's going on. First, a little bit about the engine. This thing is a Honda K24A3. We're no stranger to these things. We absolutely love them. This is a stock standard engine out of the Honda Accord Euro found here in Australia. I think this is about a 2005 or 2006 model. It's got the factory inlet manifold on the bottom half, but one of the guys has printed an adapter here in order to fit the Yamaha R1 individual electronic throttle bodies on the front. Keeping in mind, it's a stock standard engine. The only modifications they tell me it's had is an oil change. That's about it. On the back side, it's got a custom-made exhaust manifold that goes out. This is a Mazda 121. So when this thing was put together, performance wasn't the, the only criteria. Basically, this was a budget build for one of the guys to get out to the racetrack and have a good time. So I'm not expecting this to break any horsepower records by any means. It's more a really stable, really solid test platform for the guys to get out with and have a good time. Now, one of the biggest problems that we have when we're tuning an engine that's got individual throttle bodies is the lack of manifold pressure. That means that in our fuel map and in our ignition map, in our target cam angle tables, typically we'd be mapping against manifold pressure. But when we've got individual throttle bodies, a light press on the throttle means that we're gonna go from vacuum, we might be pulling 10, 12, 15, 20 inches of vacuum. As soon as we touch that throttle, we get almost no vacuum. And what that means is it really reduces the resolution in our tuning tables. What we need to do is first figure out how much vacuum this thing is gonna pull and decide whether we're gonna tune the thing still based on manifold pressure or whether we're gonna convert all those tables across to tune off throttle position. But here's the secret, still in the fuel map using VE, volumetric efficiency tuning. That means that we're still gonna need a manifold pressure reference because the engine management system, even though we're still gonna tune off throttle position in the fuel map, it still wants to see manifold pressure because we're gonna use manifold pressure in that VE calculation to determine the density or the weight of the air going into the engine, in turn being able to mix that with a known quantity of fuel, giving us our air to fuel ratio. I'll show you what it looks like with manifold pressure, then I'll flick over the throttle position. We'll be focusing today on the fuel map, the ignition map and the target Kingham angle map and all the other tables will follow the same table axes, but today we're gonna to focus on the fuel map. Inside the mighty Mazda 121, we've got an Elite 1500 ECU running the show. It's paired with an IC7 dash and an eight button keypad. The keypad's doing all of the starter circuitry, it's doing the high beams, the thermofan override, uh, the fuel pump override, um, the wipers with the wiper parking, as well as the indicators. So now, the first thing that we're gonna need to do, I wanna start the engine, I wanna get it to idle and get an idea of where it get, how much vacuum it pulls at idle. Then I'll load it up a little bit and just get a bit of a feel for how much resolution we've got in the map sensor and then we'll make a decision whether we need to tune the thing versus the drive-by-wire throttle angle or whether we just tune it normally straight off a map sensor. Okay, fire up. Yep, 
Okay, so the thing's pulling about 16, 17 inches. Our drive-by wire throttles are sitting at 0.3, 0 0.4%, something like that. And our short-term trims are actually putting in a heap of fuel to keep the thing idling. So that's because we haven't actually tuned it yet. We could go in there and just put a bunch of fuel in there just to help it to kind of get in the ballpark. So I might even just go there and go P for percent, we'll put 14% in. There we go, that gets us about in the ballpark. So our target is 14 and a half to one. Our ECU is gonna go in and get us to about 14 and a half to one. So let me just touch the throttle just a little bit and just get a bit of a feel for how much vacuum disappears. this might not be the best example of an individual throttle body car to tune on throttle position because it does actually still pull quite a lot of manifold vacuum. However, we are still gonna flick this thing across to throttle position tuning, so now I'm gonna shut it down. I'll flick the tables across and show you what to do. If we come across here, what we're gonna do is go table setup. So, instead of tuning this thing based on manifold pressure, I'm gonna come across here and I'm going to go for throttle position. Here we go. Now we're going to tune it with a whole lot of resolution down low because it's really important to get that part right. Then as the throttle opens up, we get a bit looser. So maybe every 10% after that. And we go, okay. So now you can see here that as I press the throttle up and down, what the ECU is looking at now, instead of that being based on manifold pressure, it's now based on throttle position. So if I hold the throttle pedal at say 50%, give or take, this results in the ECU looking at that value of 50% for its fuel model. Keep in mind, like I said before, it is still referencing that manifold pressure. So it's always a really good idea to have a map sensor connected. Even if your manifold pressure is very, very poor, you've got very, very little manifold pressure, it's a nice idea to have that feeding into the ECU fuel model because even that map sensor is also affected by barometric pressure. So when you're going up and down hills, it is affecting the manifold pressure, resulting in a change to the fuel model. One of the things to note here is that with my foot fully off the throttle pedal or the APP, actual pedal position, not the TPS, the throttle position sensor, this fuel map is based off the throttle position sensor out the front there. At the moment, it's referencing 8%. And that's because it's using the idle control circuitry. So the idle controller at the moment is holding that throttle body 8% open in order to do the, the post start or in order to get the thing up and running. As soon as it fires up, it's gonna come back and it's gonna idle at one or two or 3% of throttle body opening because it does take into account the idle control requirement. Now, before we start it and try and rough in the fuel map now that we're basing it versus throttle position, I'm gonna come down here to the O2 control I'm gonna turn the long-term O-trims off. So that means that I'm not gonna have short-term trims acting on long-term trims while I'm trying to make the adjustments as well. Once we're finished with the tune, I'll turn the long-terms back on. But this is kind of an interesting thing and probably not so much to do with this topic, but just O2 control in general. I like to leave the O2 control short terms turned on and quite aggressive when I'm roughing in the tune and you'll see why in a minute. Basically, I'm allowing the thing to be choosing a target air fuel ratio. I'm gonna watch how much the short term trim's doing in order to achieve my target. Then I don't need to do the maths in my head. I don't need to be in a particular fuel mode. So whether I'm in Lambda or petrol AFR or methanol AFR or, or ethanol AFR or a mixture, instead, I'm gonna simply look at what the short term trim's doing. That tells me how far out that VE value is at any particular site then I'll rough that value in and keep going through. As well as that, the other thing that I like to do under the base fuel table here, I don't put a huge amount of load sites in because I don't wanna be tuning a huge amount of load sites and a lot of the time you don't need to. 
I'll start to feel more load sites in if there's a problem area, whereas if we've got a weird reverberation problem or as the VTEC on this particular engine is turning on and off, we might want a few more load sites, but I'm not gonna add them in if our mixtures are nice and smooth and we don't have any humps and bumps. There's no real need to. First task before we start the engine is to rough in our fuel model. So I know that being a four stroke engine, it's gonna idle at roughly a, a volumetric efficiency of around 50. Flat out, it's gonna be around 100, minus any inefficiencies like our injector flow rate, our injector dead time, our actual charge air temperature, which is a mixture of our inlet air temperature and our coolant temperature, uh, any reverberations in manifold pressure, all sorts of different things. So typically they all get absorbed in the tune, but within reason, all we're gonna do is come down here and say at 1000 RPM, we're gonna be about 50% efficient. Then I'm gonna kind of just smooth it across at about 100% efficient, give or take at about five or 6,000 RPM. Pretty good place to start. And then I'm gonna bring it down. It does have a really, really funny shape when we tune these things on throttle position. And I'm gonna fill that in now and kind of just copy it across. We'll use my linearized keys to kind of put the right shapes in the right places. Okay, so this is gonna be nowhere near perfect, but kind of helps me to at least get a little bit of a start on what the shape probably should look like. So now, here's the hard part. All we're gonna do is start it up. I'm gonna use my foot on the pedal and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna sit it at 1500 RPM and I'm gonna go 10, 15, 20, 30, 40% throttle and I'm gonna see how close we are to that tune. I'm gonna be watching our short term trims and then I'm gonna adjust the base fuel map to suit. Probably an interesting point there, you could see what I've just done. I've just thrown the fuel map together. I know the engine size. We've got a manifold pressure reference. I know the injector size. I've roughed in the injector data for the dead times because truthfully, I don't know what they are. And look what's just happened. The engine started and running and we're within, we're about four or 5% lean at that spot right there. So that's something to show you that using the VE model, if you enter in the rough data and if you know that 50% at idle, 100% flat out. This is how the engine should start and run. It's pretty impressive. I don't necessarily need to start in first gear to take off on the dyno, but clutching this one's a bit of a doozy. Here we go. Second, third gear, fourth gear. The reason why we do this in fourth gear is because the torque is about one to one. So that means that it's not gonna throw me off the dyno. All right, already, I'm gonna bring us down to 1500 RPM, like I said, but have a look what's happening here. 1500, here we go. Okay, 1500 RPM, short-term trim is pulling out 10%, and that cell right there. So, I'm gonna go P percentage, minus, whatever it says, eight. Next cell, 8%. P percentage minus eight. I'm gonna do the whole row because I've simply roughed that in. I don't really know what's there. Excel, P minus seven. Excel, 15%. Uh, probably about 5%. I'm gonna leave that because that's probably within the O2 trim, so we'll fix that up. Minus three, four there, and Excel. 30%. I'm gonna try and get us to about minus five everywhere. 40%, minus 5% there. 50%, okay, pretty heavy there, minus 10%. See our trims come back. 70%, minus 10. Let's go to 2,000 RPM. There we go. So now that we're at 2,000. 
2,000 RPM, I'm just going to highlight ourselves from 2,000 RPM. Pulling 12% there, minus 5, get us in the ballpark. Remember I'm only roughing this in, so we get this in the ballpark, minus 10. Next one. as high as we feel comfortable, but obviously there comes to a point where we can't just hold this thing wide open throttle at six, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 RPM. And remembering that this is a relatively small engine making a relatively small amount of horsepower. If this was a two, three, four, 500 kilowatt engine, it's not reasonable or responsible to be holding at that amount of load for that amount of time. So that's when we would go onto the dyno and we would start doing ramp runs and we'll be ramping through all of those sites rather than doing the steady state loading. Within reason, it's about 50% at idle. We've got a shape of about 70s, 80s, 90s as we bring the engine on power and it's... And it's revving really nice. There's no bang and there's no cracking. So now all I'm gonna do is start doing some loaded ramp runs. We'll start at, let's say, 25% throttle. And the way that I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go down here in the mapping I'm going to go to engine functions, drive by wire. There's a little bit of a trick here as well to tune this thing. Max TPS, max throttle position, 25%. So now if I hold the throttle, my pedal flat to the floor, the throttle body is only going to go to 25%. So I'll be able to do a power run and I'll be able to look exactly where our mixtures are, see how much power it's making at 25% throttle. I'll tune that section, I'll smooth that part of the fuel map in, then I'll go up to 50%, then 75%, then 100%, and if need be, I'll go to all the individual cells in between. up here, go to data log manager, that last log, there we go, there's a 25 second pull, I'm going to open that, I'll pull up my engine RPM, okay, that was the pull that we just did, I'm going to bring up our throttle position, there we go, which was stuck at 25%, if you go back through the video you'll see that my actual pedal position was at 100% and the ECU locked our throttle position at 25% makes what we're doing very, very simple. I'll bring up our wideband O2. Okay, I'll bring up our target lambda. So let's see what just happened there. We were targeting 12.9130, and we got 12, five, sorry, about half a mixture out, not, not too bad. We bring up our short-term fuel trims. Okay, and here we go. So we can see here, look how hard the short-term trims are working in order for me to achieve those targets. So everything there was reasonably good, but the harder we revved it at 25% throttle, the further away from the target we became. So we can go into our fuel maps here and we'll fix that up. Now what we can do here is come across and all we need to do look through our targets. I'll turn the car off. We look at our target versus our actual and I can just go through and make a percentage adjustment the whole way along here and I can even put in a load cell at 25%. So put an extra side in at 25%. Hit OK. So wide open throttle 5000 RPM. We're pulling out 11% start down a little bit lower, we'll start 4,000 RPM, 6%. And we'll just go here, minus 5% for example, we we'll still like the O2 controller just to do a little bit of work. We come across to 
5,000 RPM, pull out 10%. 5,500 RPM, you can see how this is working. Minus, P for percentage, minus 14%. It's always a nice idea to do percentages rather than actual values or pressing ups or downs because you don't end up often keeping the same shape of the map and that is a bit of an issue. So now we can look at that shape here and say, okay, well the number to the left of that can't be high up. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna kind of smooth that all in, copy that one all the way up and that seems probably realistic then just going to smooth that across. This is starting to look a little bit realistic about what that shape probably is going to end up looking like and that's only experience that's going to show you that or watching videos like this. So I've made all my changes in playback mode. I'm going to go click here. That was blue when it's in playback mode or it's green when we're online and we're making changes and all the data's live. So all I'm going to go down now, I was quite happy with that. I'm now going to go to 50% throttle opening. Data log manager. Let's get that log's already extracted. There it is. Open in data log viewer. Let's see what happens. So I'll double click on engine RPM. Throttle position. Okay, so that was 50% of throttle blades. What was our air fuel ratio doing? What was our target doing? Things are looking pretty, within about half a mixture, so pretty reasonable. See what our trims did there. Okay, so our trims looked within one or two percent fantastic down low, and then they kind of just roll off up top. So I'm just going to do exactly the same work as we did before. Come back up to our log viewer. I'm going to go to our playback. And it's going to show me exactly where we went and it's going to show me exactly how many corrections it was making. So if it's pulling three or 4%, I'm not too concerned. But as soon as we start pulling six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm making it work pretty hard. So all I'm gonna do is come up here and say, okay, about there, minus about 20. It starts to get quite inefficient. Minus 15, about there. What are we doing at 6,000? 6,000, it was pulling 10%. back a little bit, take 5,000, 5,000 about 3%, so pretty reasonable. Okay, so now let's have a look at what's going on. That one there, we'll smooth those across, like something like that. Those ones all kind of, yep, it's pretty much that, that blocky sort of shape that we're gonna be expecting. And now that we've got there as well, all we're gonna do, that seems pretty realistic for me, so now I'm gonna add another load site put one in at 75%. There we go. Okay, so what do you think the next thing is gonna do? Add another thing at 75%. We'll do another pull at 75%. We'll come out of playback. Max TPS, 75%. Only difference now to add another level of complexity into this is that we have, the whole time we've been talking about this, we haven't actually got the VTEX and the high-low camshaft. The variable cam control, yeah, the infinitely variable cam control has been moving. The VTEC has not switched yet. So I'm gonna highlight that whole map that we've been playing with. I'm gonna copy it and see down the bottom here, cam control output state, off or on. I'm gonna paste that in and then I'm gonna put 10% more efficiency into it. So what that's showing me is that if the camshaft is off, it's going to use this fuel map. If the camshaft turns on, it's going to use this fuel map. It's going to switch to the high camshaft. I'm expecting the volumetric efficiency or the cylinder filling to increase. I'm expecting it to make more horsepower. So I'm just adding a guess of I'll put 10% more volumetric efficiency in everywhere. 
I'm going to give it a run at 75% throttle and see what happens. This time you should hear the VTEC cam switch in and hear the honk. Now it's starting to look like kind of what we're expecting. I'm excited about what just happened here and I'm excited to show you. So, let's pull up that data log. One of the things that we've been doing this whole time is we've been pushing that map into the corner. So we started down here and we started really rough. And we started pushing into the corner further. Every time we do a run, we keep pushing further and further into the corner. So once we get to the end of the mapping, we should be getting closer and closer and closer every time we do a pull. So now it's 75%. Let's have a look and see what happens. Here's our RPM. We revved it to 8,000 just then. Here's our whoop, target air fuel ratio. Here's our actual air fuel ratio. They're pretty close. Our short term fuel trim. How much correction was the ECU making? Uh, uh, half a percent, one, but uh, arguably zero until we get to the inefficiency of the engine where at the very top we're pulling out 3% of the fuel. This right here is why volumetric efficiency fuel modelling in your engine management system is so nice. It's because the more work that you put into that bottom end part, the more work you put into getting your, your ejected dead times and your flow rates and all these little things right, as we start pushing up into the higher horsepower areas of the map, things just get better and better and easier and easier. I will go into the map up here at nearly 8,000, so 7,500, 8,000 RPM, 7,500, 8,000 RPM on the high throttle map, so 7,500, 8,000, right up here. All I'm going to do, very, very small amount, I'm going to go here and I'm going to pull out 2%, oh, I'll pull out 3, 3 there, 3 there, we'll pull out 2 there, up oh, 2, okay. Now, we're going to come up to our 100% throttle. Actually, we'll go 98. The reason why I do 98 or 95 or 93, depending on the style of throttle bodies, is sometimes an electronic throttle can actually go over-centered, which will in turn reduce the airflow. Now, these throttles at about 98% seem to be exactly open. If we go 100, it's the same as about 98% in the other direction. meeting our targets almost perfectly up until the very top where we're still pulling out two or three percent of the fuel right at the very top end just because we're starting to run out of efficiency. There are some funny things happening though. And this is one of the things that we need to talk about. Do we need individual throttles? The K24A3, the Honda engine, has a fantastic inlet manifold design and even in factory form I see power levels changing, whether you've got that power pipe bolted on the front of the throttle body or not. By removing the intake tubing from that, factory inlet manifold, factory throttle body, factory everything, if you've got that power pipe style thing on the front, adding or removing that, so if we remove that power pipe, you can lose two, three, four, five kilowatts. Likewise, when you fit a set of awesome Yamaha R1 drive-by-wire individual throttle bodies on a beautiful custom adapter to put onto your K24A3, you're not gonna make any more power. It's gonna sound absolutely amazing. You may or may not get better throttle response, but something like this, it simply doesn't have the runner length. So that's the missing part of the puzzle. We now need to have a look at it and we need to start adjusting that runner length in order to make the most power we can at the desired engine RPM. We could do that by putting trumpets across the front of the throttle bodies. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle because they will foul on the radiator support. But the whole idea of this is tuning that intake length runner in order to get the most power at your desired RPM. 
So that's a basic rundown of how we would tune our base fuel tables based on either manifold pressure or throttle position, depending on the intake manifold or the plenum setup that you've got on the car. Keeping in mind something like the Nissan Skyline GTR, the RB26 engine, it has six individual throttle bodies, but it's also twin turbocharged. Now, here's something interesting to think about. If we tuned that engine just based off throttle position only, the ECU would have absolutely no idea how much vacuum or boost pressure is going into the engine. If we put 15 pounds of boost pressure into it, of course we're gonna need a whole lot more fuel. It's another reason why we must have a manifold pressure sensor when we're tuning an engine like this or a turbocharged engine with multiple throttle bodies based off throttle position we must have that manifold pressure sensor if we're gonna tune the thing using volumetric efficiency or VE-based fuel modeling. As for individual throttle bodies, well, the verdict's still out for me. I absolutely love the look of them. Uh, the availability, these things offer Yamaha R1. There's plenty of donor bike engines and parts around because let's be honest, the bikes don't last that long. This adapter plate that's been configured to put these Yamaha R1 electronic throttles on the K24 engine, it just bolts together. It uses the bottom half of this manifold, which has got the complicated bit to make. It's got the fuel rail, it's got the injector bosses, it's got the flange plate directly to the cylinder head. Uh, because they're an electronic throttle body and an Elite 1500 ECU, we're doing all of the idle control through the throttles and the thing starts beautifully, it does cruise control, it does our rev limiting, so the throttles actually come shut based on the rev limiter. So there's a lot of functionality there and there's a lot of reasons why you would do this. Well, this won't be the last set of electronically actuated individual throttle bodies that we see, but that's about as much as I've got today. If you've got a topic you want me to cover, please leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to get a car to have a bit of a play with and show you how things work. As always, thanks very much for watching. My name's Scott, catch you next time. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.